class stuff, you have to have a sense that other people are important as well. You need to understand, negotiate, and balance diverse views and beliefs. So here's what that means in gobbledygook language, in non gobbledygook language. You need to figure out how to balance everybody, all the different ideas of your group and of, of the classroom, in order to come up with solutions that work for everyone, especially in an environment where, um, where there's like different points of view. You know how I put you into WEX writing groups and I said you all have different skills in WEX? Do you remember that? So that's a diverse group because you all come to that group with different abilities. So make sure you balance those, those abilities with each other. Come up with good solutions that work for everyone. And then you need to perceive other points of view from people, and you need to empathize with them and predict how others are thinking, and you need to anticipate potential misunderstandings. All of that means, you guys, you have to be able to look at somebody's face or, or see what they're saying or hear what they're feeling, know what they're feeling, and be able to say, you know what? I think that there might be a problem. Like, I think this person might be upset. I think this person might be frustrated or confused. And when you're able to do that, when you're able to see that they're confused, then you're able to help them because you're aware of it. But a lot of times as, as kids, we don't, we don't notice that people are struggling. We, we don't know how to read them that well. And that's fine. You're a kid. But one of the goals is to be able to read them. Think, think about you and me for a second. Has there ever been a moment this year in class when I came up to you and either checked on you to see if you were okay or um, said I'm reading your face and it looks like you're upset or you're frustrated or confused? Has there ever been a moment when I, when I gave you some sort of feedback based on the way you look to me? Yeah. A few of you, at least most, I would think most of you, right? I don't remember. I never do. <laughs> I tune everything out after. Oh, I did that to Mason, didn't I? Yeah, so Mason, I was like, but I, I think Mason, yeah, I, I want to talk to you about that. I think maybe we need to get our eyes checked or something. Maybe you're squinting because it's hard to see. Do you think? Or no? I just wondered because you're doing that, and sometimes that's a sign that we need to just get our eyes t tested, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I don't, I'm not putting you on the spot. Don't feel on the spot. Are you feeling on the spot, Mason? What do you mean by like, that? You're not feeling like I'm embarrassing you, right? I was just no, thinking out loud. Just getting yeah. There. I was trying to make sure, though, that, like, if you're squinting, you might want to just see if you're having trouble with vision. But no, that's, that but then, yeah, so I don't know. But you guys, I'm trying to always feel your emotion. I'm always trying to understand, you know, are you worked up? Are you scared? Are you frustrated? I want to know that because I want to be able to help you with it, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Shreya. But also, at Passion Time, you told us if you're giggling, then it looks like you're doing something bad. Yeah, the, the, the body language you send to me is this message of I'm probably off task and not doing what I need to be doing. And I don't mind it for like a few seconds. Like in Lit Circles is a great time when we should giggle for a moment and then keep reading. Because there's funny things that happen in our books. Or we made a prediction and it was so wrong or it was so right or whatever. Like there's times when you really want to get into your book and laugh. Totally fine, but you get right back into it and I'm able to see you're reading again. So I'm, I'm, I know when you're back on track. But with Passion Time, it's hard to know when you're actually back on track. Do you guys get that that's different? So yeah, I do try to read you. I want you guys to learn how to read each other. All right. And that doesn't mean we're always right. Look at how many times I've been wrong with my wonderings, but it's still nice to care enough to try and be like, hey, is everything okay? You know, teachers do that for me too. If I look like I'm stressed out or really like tired or whatever, they'll come up to me in the halls and say, are you okay? Uh, Mr. Solis, are you feeling all right? You look a little bit like upset today. Uh, and I'll be like, oh gosh, no, I'm just so out of it because I haven't slept in a week. <laughs> you know, or whatever, right? I mean, you know I sleep, but you know how you just don't get a lot of sleep sometimes. I don't get a lot of sleep at all. Right? So, kiddos, the last one says, oh, we did the last one, right? Yeah. So give yourself a score and highlight one of those that you'd like to work on. So, Ms. Denzeli, if you want to walk around, just make sure that um, they're highlighting one bullet and um, they're putting a dot with a number on it. If they look like they don't really know what that section is, maybe you can help explain gobbledygook. Because it's, it's written in adult language, and I can't explain half of it. So you just would do the best that you can. But um, I think it's valuable to have you in the room helping if you can. Bless you. Good, kiddos? All right, the next section. This all gets into now, like, the Internet and using the computer. Do you know how... You hear, so when adults hear 21st century skills, they think that all it means is technology. How much technology have we talked about and we've gone for an hour and 15 minutes? How much technology have we talked about, Ben? At least 5,000 years ago. 
I'm sorry. For this 21st century skills checklist, how much technology have we talked about? None, right? And haven't we been talking for an hour and 15 or so? So most adults think that it's all about technology, but we just did like 28 skills and none of it was technology. Are you clear about that? Yeah. So when people ask you, what is, you know, like your parents might say, well, what's 21st century skills? Isn't that just using the computer? You've got to be an advocate for me to say, no. actually, no, it's not just about that. That is part of it. It's the, that was the last part of it for us. But it's not really about that. It's about all those other skills we just talked about being, being leaders and, and collaborators and um, reflective thinkers and all that stuff that we talked about. So make sure you, you're able to say those things because that's what matters to me. The technology, that'll come because it's kind of fun. Technology is fun. I watched you during the energy debate today, and you were like, no problem. I'm just going to move this here, and I'm going to turn this on here, and I'm going to – it's like, oh, yeah, you guys know more about technology than I do. It's great. So you guys are going to learn that, you know what I mean, as you practice it. So that's not something I'm too worried about. It's this other stuff that I really care about and I want you guys to focus in on. All right. So here goes. Um, access and evaluate information. This means our, if I give you a task on the Internet and I say, I need you to find information on coal energy right now. I need you to solve all those questions on the organizer, kiddo. That, that organizer. Do you know which organizer I mean? Yeah. The one that was the second page of the packet that you had to put onto the poster? How available is it? All that? What does it cost? If I told you you were working alone right now, and you had to get me that organizer filled and complete with all the right answer for coal, could you do it, and would you do it in a timely manner? That's what this section is. So you need to be able to access information efficiently, which means quickly, and effectively, which means accurately. You need to have the right answers. And you need to evaluate the information critically and competently by only using sources we trust. So you got to know, like, I don't know if I trust this source. You know, one solar panel equals, or one, one windmill equals 16,000 solar panels. Yeah. I don't know if I trust it. But I looked it up, and there were two websites that said it. So I, I at least found confirmation, right? So, but you got to say, do I trust it or not? So kiddos, you decide right now. Which of those do you think you need to work on more? finding like actually trustworthy websites or being fast and accurate which one do you think you'd like to work on more highlight that and then give yourself a score out of eight remember don't give yourself a nine or ten um and tell us what we're gonna yeah i hope you know that we'll move on from there then All right the other one the other one in this section guys is use and manage information and it says, use, ma use information accurately and creatively for the issue or problem at hand. Manage the flow of information from a whole bunch of sources. And apply a fundamental understanding of the ethical legal issues surrounding it. So let me tell you what all that means. It means, I'm going to take the information that I find on the internet and put it into my own words. So I'm going to know how to summarize things and put it in my own words. I'm not going to ever plagiarize which means copying and pasting and not giving credit. You, if you copy and paste, you have to actually do something separate. So, like, I copied and pasted in an email the other day. You have to put it in these quotes and indent it to give credit for it. That's how you do it in, like, a formal thing. Email is probably not a good example of when you have to do it, but that's when I chose to do it last. So you have to give certain credit when you're copying and pasting so that they know that it's not your words. So are you able to summarize information correctly and use your own words, are you able to cite your sources if you use other people's information at all? And I'm going to teach you how. So you don't have to know how, but do you know that you should do it? Okay, I'm going to teach you in human body research how to cite your sources. And then um, are you using a wide variety of sources to do that, or are you just sticking to the first one that gives you all the information? Because you, you, you're supposed to take information from multiple people, because what if that first site that you used isn't really as trustworthy as you thought? Well, then you're not learning as much as you could be if you were using multiple sites. Jeremy? Um, like, so in energy debate, they just put it in quotes instead of, like, says energy or whatever. That's great. Yeah, you don't have to know how to do it yet. You just know that you should do it, right? Yeah, I'll teach you how to do it later this year. Ben? Nice. So you knew to give NASA credit. As long as you're knowing to give credit to people, that's a positive in that area. Give yourself a score. Highlight something. All right. 
It's very. Are you commenting on the the packet? It's thick and it's confusing. Yeah, I don't know. Oh oh oh. Last three. Is it the last side? Yeah. Woo. All right, kiddos. Analyzing media. So media can mean multiple things. Media can mean um, television and newspapers. Media can mean what you use in art, like if you're going to use um, crayons or markers or paints or, or sculpture, it could be your medium. Um, in this case, media means uh, sources of information, like different websites or whatever. So let's see how we analyze it. You guys processing? Alex, can you process a little bit more? <laughs> Thanks. Understand both how and why media messages are constructed and for what purposes. So kiddos... Why are they writing headlines the way they are? Why are they putting um, bulleted lists the way they are? Remember all the text features we studied in nonfiction text? Why do they do it the way they do it? What are they trying to do to the reader? All right? Utilize multiple media and technologies and know how to judge their effectiveness as well as assess their impact. So use a whole bunch of different sources, and but not just sources, but actually technologies, meaning... Maybe the computer's not the only thing we need to use. Maybe we need to get a video camera and use that. Maybe we need to use an iPad for something. Maybe we need not even to be on the Internet. Maybe we need to, yeah, use something like a book or something else. Um, but then we have to judge how effective they are and decide if it's, if it's the right impact for what we need. It, it's not good when you say, you know what, I'm going to use this book for this project. And you look through it and there's no real good answers and you say, well, I'm just going to use what it has because that's all I've got. Well, that's a bad thing to do. You need to say, this source isn't working. I need to analyze the media and find a different media that works better for me for this problem. And then examine how individuals interpret messages differently and how values and points of view are included or excluded and how media can influence those beliefs and behaviors. So, kiddos, if you're reading a site all about wind energy and it's from a company who produces windmills or wind turbines, they're not necessarily going to say nice things about other energy sources. So if you're trying to get a nice, you know, um, somebody who's not biased, you pick the wrong website. They're going to be biased. It's how they sell more stuff. They show you what's good. You don't, you never should persuade people not to buy your product. That's bad business sense. If you don't think your product's good, you should improve your product. Don't try to say, you know what, my product's good, but I don't think you guys should buy it. Solar energy is better. Or something like that. That would be bad. That's just bad business sense. If your product's not good, fix it, but don't tell people not to buy it. That's not good business Don't buy my product. Give yourself a score, highlight one, move on to the next section. We only have two more sections before music. Two more sections. It's just these two bullets. Two sets of bullets. Yep. But we still have other things that we're doing, so don't get too excited. Create media products. So, kiddos, do we ever do anything online that we can show other people? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, think about all the things we create, like blog posts, like videos, like um, any kind of projects that we might make. We made Vokies. We made, think about all the different, but think, think about all of these things, guys, that we made something. Are you thinking about what we made on here? Soccer is not a good example because that's not making something. Can you think about them all? So think of those while I read the bullets, okay? All the things we've made online. Understand, read with me, please. Understand and utilize the most appropriate media creation tools, characteristics, and conventions. So use the right tool for the job. We're not going to use YouTube if Vokey's better. We're not going to use um, GoAnimate if... Uh, I know that some people are working in GoAnimate. Use GoAnimate if um, it'd be better to use Thingling. Right, everybody? Use the right tool for the job. Understand and effectively utilize the most appropriate expressions and interpretations of, oh my goodness, in diverse multicultural environments. So, kiddos, yeah, that's, I told you I need to make a kid-friendly version. I will eventually. Um, so, I, I think that just means, like, you guys, you're going to need to be able to do this working alone, working with others, working at home. You need to be able to make media products wherever you're having to work and with whomever is in your group. Are you understanding that? If you're with other people, you need to make sure that you include their ideas and stuff. And then it just says ICT literacy, which is information, communications, technology, literacy. I'll probably delete that bullet because that doesn't really say much. So I would only highlight the first one, kiddos. That, the second one doesn't make a lot of sense, and the third one's getting deleted. 
I don't know how you feel, <laughs> but just I would just highlight the first one. Use the right tool for the job, and I'd write that in with my word, with my pencil. Use the right tool for the job. Yeah. So that first bullet should just be use the right tool for the job, and I think that's the only one we should probably pick. And then the whole category is create media media products, so it means I hope you're able to create those things online that I'm asking websites. you to create using websites and stuff like that. So I hope you're able to do that. But I know I'll help you along the way because we do that every day in our class. But not just me, but we'll all help you along the way. Won't we all help? Yeah. yeah. You guys have taught many lessons and you've helped each other out multiple times. All right, last section. Apply technology effectively. Use technology as a tool to research, organize like Trello, evaluate, and communicate information. Use technology as a tool to create and share what you know with others. Use digital technologies like computers, um, any kind of tablets, etc., um, as like communication networking tools and social networks. That just means um, we use Twitter, we use um, YouTube is a bit of a social network for us. So use social networks appropriately to access, manage, integrate, evaluate, and create information to successfully to su I got it. Be able to, say that. to successfully function in a knowledge economy. We're, we're a knowledge economy, meaning a, a country or a society of people who are always learning on our own. We're looking for information. We don't need to buy a book on every subject that we want to learn about. We can look it up ourselves. Okay? So I need you to highlight something that you think you can try to improve on and then give yourself a score on how you apply technology effectively. I think we do a nice job of that in our class. Do you agree? All right. So now for the next step, we don't have a lot to do left, but I need you to go through, and next to each set of, um, next to each, like, arrows, here, I'll do it right up here, right here, I want you to do this. Out of eight, out of eight, out of eight. Do you guys With see what I've written? Pencil or what? With your pencil. Can you do out of eight, out of eight, out of eight? But don't put your score out of eight. You're going to put my score out of eight tomorrow. Do you understand? Your score is already listed. Everyone understand this? Yeah. Tomorrow I will give you your report card. We're going to analyze our report cards together. And you're going to, you're going to look at what score I gave you for each of these. And you're going to write it in there so that when you're talking about this at home with a parent or when you're doing it alone without your parent, you can see which ones were furthest apart on. <coughs> maybe you thought you were higher, maybe you thought you were lower. It's not me. But I'll tell you, kiddos, and I'll say it again tomorrow. If I give you a four and you gave you an eight, it's not that I think you're a four, it's that that's all you've shown me. I've only seen you at a four level. So what you need to tell yourself is, I need to show Mr. Solars more of these behaviors so that he sees how much of an 8 I am at it. Yes? Yes. <coughs> if you and I both gave you a 4, let's say for example, then you and I both agree we need to make that uh, an important goal that we work on. Right, everyone? Yes. Are you sure you processed that one? Yes. If we both give you low scores. It doesn't have to be a 4. It could be a 6 if that's low for you. It could be a 2 if that's low for you. Whatever's low for you, right? Yes. Right? All right, and then last but not least, if we both give each other eights, if you give yourself an eight and I give yourself an eight, it probably doesn't make a ton of sense to make that one of our first goals. We're going to be doing goal setting tomorrow. We're probably not going to need to pick eight out of eight groups right away. That'll be a down the road kind of goal to try to improve because we're already doing really well. But we're going to be picking some goals to work on immediately, and every week we're going to be analyzing those goals. And I'll talk more about it tomorrow, but I hope you get an idea of this 21st century skills checklist is really going to help us determine goals going forward. All right, Juliana? I just realized So you you might get lower scores from me and kiddos. First trimester, you might get lower scores from me. I've only seen you for three months, right? 
And if you're quieter, I don't get to see many of your skills because you, you hide in the shadows a tiny bit. So I'm not asking you not to be shy or introverted. I'm not asking that at all. I'm saying try to make sure that I see you when you're able to show off those skills so that I'm able to assess you on those. Yeah? So I gave no one. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I wouldn't get there. It's just I didn't need to get there. But I don't want to talk about the rest of the numbers because what's low for one person might be high for another, and I don't want them to feel badly. It doesn't mean I think you're a moron or an idiot or anything like that. You guys know what I'm saying? Low in a 21st century skill just means I'd like you to work on the 21st century skill. It's just marbles, right? But I, I feel the exact same way about math, science, social studies, reading, and writing. It's just marbles. So I wish that we could almost look at them in that regards, where we all have strengths, we all have weaknesses. I didn't evaluate you on your musical talents, on your sports Good, talents. I didn't, well, but think about sports talents and other things. Like, I didn't get to give you a grade for that. I didn't get to give you a grade on how funny you are outside of class. I didn't get to give you a grade on how nice you are to your family. Those are things that are marbles too, and I think are at least as important, right? So kiddos, here's what we're going to use tomorrow during our goal setting. I just made it up. So SMART goals are something that's been around for a long time. I didn't make that up. SMART goals stood for um, specific, measurable, um, actionable, I think, relevant, and timely, I think. Oh, I were doing that last year. Okay, and I did it last year that way. But this year I decided to change it more for our classroom. So I made smarter goals, but I added an extra A, too. So it's smarter goals. Smart. Smarter. 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 smarter goals. Smart. No, you got to say it almost like you're, you're smart. European. Smart. But you're like Dutch or, or smarter. Smarter. smarter goals. Right? Very important smarter. to me. We made smarter goals today. All right. Here's what mine stand for. We'll, we'll actually analyze this tomorrow. I know we're... At the end of our period, and we're going to music shortly. But kiddos, process. It's my last few minutes. It's my last few minutes of processing. So I want to pick goals that are specific, meaning I'm going to know exactly what I need to do to, to get this goal, that are oftentimes measurable. Like, if I get to this point, I know I've done it. Not everything has to be measurable, though. Achievable, meaning I actually can get this goal. It's not a wish or a dream. Kiddos, I'm not saying I want to go to the moon. That's not my goal for, for fifth grade. We're not. Uh, you can have as many goals as you want in life, but those are not the ones we are writing down and, and focusing on. So your, your goal can be to go to the moon. I love that you would have that goal. That would be awesome. But we're not writing that one down. Do you guys understand that the goals that we write down are going to be about actually achievable goals that we can get within the next few months? Yeah. Are you sure you understand that? Yeah. So are they achievable? But are they ambitious enough? I'm not just saying, you know what, I'd like to be able to turn in one week of spelling on time this trimester. That's not ambitious enough. That's not okay. You, if you're not turning in your spelling and your spelling is a goal, your goal needs to be I need to turn in spelling every week on time. Do you hear me? Like that, You don't make a goal something that like a little kindergartner could achieve. We're fifth graders and we can do that. There's no reason why we can't. It's, it's either a goal or it isn't. If that's not one of your goals, and I didn't give you, I give you guys all goals. It's in your report card. I wrote down, I don't know, two to five goals for everybody, and I put that in your report card. So those are automatically your goals to start with. But then you're going to be picking some goals too. So if, if you pick a goal, you are working on your goal. It's not this little fake thing that we're doing for Mr. Solar. This is an actual thing we work on. We put up a board, and the board goes over here, and it says goals that, I, that we've accomplished. And we put a post-it up whenever we achieve a goal that we're proud of that we want public. If we don't want it public, we won't put it up or we won't put our name on it. Do you guys understand that sometimes we have private goals? Yeah. I need to know your private goals, but I won't share your private goals with anybody unless, like, it's your parent or something maybe, right? Yeah. But I won't purposely share your private goals. But we share our public goals to make us feel good about ourselves and to help others find goals that are important to them. Try it. But some people have really struggled with it, so we need them to fix that. And if that's a goal that they need to work on right now, that's fine. They just better achieve that goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's just important. All right, the R is relevant. So is this goal actually worth working for? Um, T is timely, meaning will we get it accomplished before the next report card or hopefully even sooner? It could be 
I could accomplish it by tomorrow, but I need to make sure that it's before the next report card so we can report on our goals. Is it everlasting, meaning once I accomplish this goal, will I be able to maintain that goal forever? Because I shouldn't have to reset that goal. That's not good. If you earn your goal and then you stop doing your goal, that's not okay. That's like I worked for the reward of earning my goal, and now that I don't have that as a goal anymore, it's not good. I have one more. I'm going fast. And then is it rewarding? Will you feel good about meeting this goal? If you don't feel good about it, at least make sure that Mr. Solars will feel good about it. Right? Yeah. All right. Tyler? Well, remember, we're always a minute. Like, we don't get in until at least a minute after. Do you remember that? Yeah, we need a minute.